All right. Hey, so this is a tough one, but um, we're getting ready to sell the boat. Moving on to the next next level, next chapter. Uh, I'm interviewing brokers right now. We're going to list it with a broker, but in the immediate future, uh, offer it out there to any viewers if you want to get like a first look. I mean, I'm happy to sell it uh, direct, private party. Uh, she's ready to go, mechanically sound, and I'll entertain offers. Happy to show the boat. Uh, it's in Alamitos Bay in Long Beach. And uh, also open to doing some uh, training, you know, uh, included as part of the deal. If uh, you're new to power boats, seems like most people going to trawlers or uh, coming off of a sailing platform. So uh, in any case, happy to spend a little time going over systems and, you know, even can take it out to Catalina and go through that whole crossing procedure and picking up a mooring over there. Um, happy to help. Enjoy doing it. Um, figure we got, uh, you know, six months to a year to get it sold. So, um, I know that's all, uh, kind of, it moves based on market and price and I'm willing to, uh, negotiate on all of that. So Beck and I are going to chat a little bit about our experience over the last six years. All right, Beck. So what are we doing? Um, not very happy about it, but yeah, we're thinking about selling the boat. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough decision. It's actually the hardest video we've made. Yeah. So we're looking at um, a move in my business to Texas, possibly next year. Mm -hmm. um, and if I do the move, I want to try to time it with summer break. So, because that's easier, right? Than moving in the middle of the school year. Yeah. Yeah. So I was out, uh, out in Texas back in October. It's December now. Uh, and we looked at some of the marinas that are closest to home. It's still looking at like a three-hour drive to Corpus Christi. Um, so I checked out Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, and Rockport. Um, I think Rockport was about the same drive. It's just like a smaller farm road or county road. It's not like the, the major interstate. I think it was Interstate 35 to get down to Corpus Christi. Anyhow, so I'm weighing to like move the boat. So I got some numbers. Uh, trucking company, it's about ten grand plus the haul out and launch costs at the respective yards. If I um, wait for a backhaul, where they find someone that wants to move a boat from the east to the west, it could get it down to about seventy five hundred dollars to move the boat. Um, so that's a possibility. But uh, I'm really weighing that, that that drive time. Like it's more of a time issue than a. a cost issue you know if it's three hours like you get out of school on a friday we drive out there we'd be getting there in the evening right and then we'd have saturday and sunday morning and then we'd be hurrying back sunday evening to get you back to school on monday yeah. um that boat is fantastic if we were able to cruise around on it immediately like you could take that thing from texas to the bahamas the intracoastal waterway all the way up to uh, where it ends is it Virginia and then um, we can get all the way up to Maine and Nova Scotia on our boat and then people do the Great Loop in it. Do you know what the Great Loop is? Um, not really. So you basically have protected waterways on the entire eastern seaboard and the Gulf Coast of Texas through Louisiana and uh, Florida. Did I skip a state? Is it Arkansas? Mississippi. Mississippi. Go through Mississippi. Um, but yeah, so you, we could just like harbor hop and there's a lot, you can anchor, I think just about anywhere in the ICW, but the problem is like, you're still in school, right? And yeah. I'm still working. And, uh, so yeah, I don't know, kind of thinking maybe we take a couple years break on the big boat and, um, what are some alternatives we've discussed? Um, possibly like get a small, like, um, sailboat, like less than 30 feet that we can possibly put on a trailer and just. Yeah, sail around harbors and possibly lakes. Do some lakes in Texas, yeah. Yeah, I like the idea of doing sailing. Corpus Christi looks like, similar to Long Beach actually, excellent um, sailing option because you have all that protected water um, and it's windy there year round without any swell because you're inside the breakwater for miles. But it's a lot of shallow water too. So the other option is we get a little shallows boat like a John boat to do fishing. That's what your grandpa likes to do. Um, so we've talked about going in halves on a, a trailerable shallow water boat. Yeah, I'd, I'd prefer that so we can like 
go to lakes and... How old were you when we got the boat? Uh, I don't really remember. I think it was somewhere like between first and third grade, I believe. Yeah, I think you had just turned... Oh, first, but yeah. For, turned uh, seven? Like you were basically mm -hmm. still six. Yeah. I think you had just had your seventh birthday. And uh, I'm so glad we did it when you were young, and I totally regret not g buying some kind of boat when you were even younger. But uh, Back then I wanted a faster boat. Now I'm, I'm starting to actually like the slower boats as long as it doesn't rock too much. That's the problem with the ocean. Mm. That's where sailboats are better. They have a lot more ballast. Ballast and sails for stability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think my next uh, power boat in the yeah, future... The, will be stabilized. Yeah. Next cruising boat. Or, uh, yeah. Caravanes or fins, maybe maybe some sails. Yeah. We're thinking about after those couple of years, maybe when I'm out of high school in, and in college, you're thinking about possibly getting like a diesel buck. Yeah, so in four years, I would think. You know, yeah. probably want to do it, kind of the plan for your mom and I if... Uh, we stick to it is once you go off to college, we'll go live on a boat full time, mm -hmm. move around the, um, the US and the Caribbean. And uh, then you can, when you're on break, you're gonna have to fly out. I think we're gonna be in a different city every time you get out of school. Yeah, I would, I would love sailing on a, or not sailing, but being on a diesel duck. Yeah, so I, I, the, I don't know, three boats I really like that you've, mm -hmm. we've talked about a lot are, um, a custom backyard built diesel duck. We wouldn't build it, I'd buy one used, but you know, it's kind of quirky. Yeah. And the thing I like about those backyard builds is they're like, you get a lot for your money because people have really customized them and overbuilt. There's that one in uh, Rockport, Texas, I've been watching for a couple of years now. It's been on the market. Um, yeah, those things are great and I could basically take it anywhere in the world. I'd, Same kind of I'd prefer for a metal diesel duck. I, I do have a reputation for running aground and hitting things. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of a metal boat, and <laughs> I don't think uh, the the maintenance and staying ahead of rust doesn't necessarily scare me. But I also you just need to paint it. Don't know any better, but yeah, yeah. that's right. You just got to keep up on it. But I do like the security of being able to bang in the things and yeah, and you uh, need it. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, and I like wood boats just for the classic reasons, and also. I they're just quieter on the water. Like the wave slap isn't as noisy and they're naturally a little warmer no, I, and insulated. Yeah, better. I don't really like the wave slap. Yeah, that's one thing with our boat where it's got those chines yeah. when you're sleeping up in the V berth. I, I sleep in the V berth. I, when it's, even in the harbor, it's really noisy. Yeah, we, I can't hear that at all in the aft cabin. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's dead quiet back there. So I remember our first year on the boat out there, we were anchored in, um, we did a lot of anchoring in our first year, just trying mm -hmm. to save money and explore. I like the idea of just being out and being the only boat in a cove mm -hmm. instead of in those mooring fields. But uh, we were out there and you had a little stand up, no, it was a boogie board. Oh yeah, a boogie, boogie board. board. That's how we met our friends on the sailboat. That's right. You were fearless on that thing. It, I know. Seven years old, you'd hop in the water. First thing in the morning, you'd pop out of bed. You didn't even want to eat breakfast. Yeah. You're out the door. I'm and, still like that sometimes. I think it was like April, March. The mm -hmm. water was still super cold, and you wouldn't even... Yeah. We had a wetsuit for you, but you didn't want to wait to put the wetsuit on. You were just in the ice-cold water, paddling off. Yeah, now my goal is to just try staying dry. You remember that uh, seaplane that was doing yeah. touch-and-goes? And you... Uh, he had stopped and shut the engine down. He was chatting to someone else on another boat. And you're like, I'm going to go talk to that guy. It was actually, I believe, the um, lifeguard or something. Oh, was it, were they talking to the Long Beach rescue boats? Yeah. yeah I remember that. You paddled over there. And uh, I was watching you from the boat. It was, that was a good, I don't know, a couple hundred yards away. Yeah. In the um, port of Long Beach oh, by Island White. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you paddled over there and started chatting with the pilot. And, yeah, uh, I love that. He let, you, he let you climb on the pontoons. Yeah. And then I thought, uh-oh, you're getting on the plane. I should go over there and intervene. And so I went over in the dinghy, and uh, you guys were in an in-depth discussion about 
aluminum and stainless steel grades that are used in aircraft. <laughs> I do remember them, like I told them I was on channel 71 and yeah, they started calling me on it. Oh, that's right. I think I have some video of that too. Yeah. Where Baywatch, no, was it Baywatch or the Long Beach lifeguards? They were it chatting with you on one. channel 71. Yeah, that was the boat that they were attached to. Okay, and you were getting upset because they weren't <laughs> using proper radio yeah. etiquette. Yeah. I don't remember that part, but I do remember them being on the radio. And then, yeah, around that same time, we, um, we were out at Emerald Bay overnight. Mm -hmm. It was still in the springtime, and it was super foggy. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing, you popped out of bed, and the um, fish and game boat yeah. had pulled in there. You remember that? Yeah, I do remember that fish and game boat. What, uh, do you remember what you did? Uh, I remember paddling over and saying hi. I don't remember my conversation. I do remember also finding a, like, a pool toy floating around in Harold Bay once. That's right. That was on Buccaneer days. There was all mm -hmm. kinds of things blowing towards yeah. Emerald Bay from uh, the Isthmus, from all the partiers. Yeah. Yeah, you got a couple seasons out of that inflatable tube. It always had a leak. Um, and then you got an upgrade from the paddleboard. What was next? Kayak. I actually, I believe I had my kayak then. I might have. No, I didn't. Look at that. That was a Christmas gift. Yeah. I remember that, and then we were out at Cat Harbor for Christmas. That's when we gave it to you, and uh, it was like gale conditions out there. It was howling. I think it was gusting to like 30 or I 35. I don't remember that. It wasn't that Oh, you fast. jumped out there. You were paddling upwind. Yeah, the like, wind wasn't that bad. Paddling fiercely, and you were just standing still. Do you remember that? No, but I do remember um, the cap on it popped open, and you thought I sunk it on my first day. You were such a lightweight back then, you used to stand up on it like a surfboard. I can still do that if I'm like, if I can hold on to a time bandit. I can let go and kind of hold on, kind of stand up. I can still do it. So the three boats we're looking at next, the first one's a diesel duck. Mm -hmm. Metal or knots to metal. be determined. Metal, <laughs> yeah, like metal. Um, and then what's one of the other ones we've been looking at? Uh... I do know probably sailboat. Yeah, we've talked about sailboat, maybe intermediate. I don't think I want to cruise and live full time on a sailboat. I mm -hmm. just, I don't like being out in the sun and the weather that much. I love the so sail. So a motor sailor would be yeah, good. Yeah, maybe. Or like those diesel docks that mm -hmm. have the sail assist package. You know, just enough sails to get a little stability and mm -hmm. play a little bit and motor sail. I like that idea. Um, and as a backup option to go downwind, we lose the main engine. But, yeah. But, um... The other one we've looked at is uh, it's just a basically a bigger, more seaworthy version of the boat we have now, the Krogan 42. Um, most of them were, the earlier ones were made in the same yard as our boat in Taiwan. Different architect, totally different design, mm -hmm. but just 42 foot trawler, full displacement. It's got rounded, a rounded hull, no chines, so there's no chine slap. Yeah, that's forward good. Forward cabins. Um, and those are super affordable for what you get for the boat. You buy something that's like same vintage as ours, early to late 80s. Uh, and same thing, I, that boat, there's a guy um, I've been following online, he's a retired school teacher from New York City that's been, he's crossed the Atlantic twice and he went through the Panama Canal, I think last summer. And anyway, he's on his way to Japan via Alaska. He's going up the west coast to, to Alaska which I think he's somewhere now in British Columbia. I've got to check in. It's been yeah. a little while. But he's going to take that boat, single engine, same engine we have on our boat, no backup engine, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going to Japan. So, yeah, I'd like to do that. I don't know if I'd be that adventurous crossing oceans in that vintage of boat, but it's pretty impressive to see that it's possible. But same thing, that thing, I would love that boat for U.S. East and West Coast and the Caribbean. Yeah, I would... I prefer a diesel duck out of all of them. Here, here are my concerns with the diesel duck. It doesn't have a big following, so resale, I think, is super difficult on one of those. Yeah. So we buy it, and let's say we keep it for 10 years. The, the ones that pop up for sale, they, they stay on the market for years. Uh, the Krogans turn hands quickly because that's just a very comfortable, easy, popular boat. And, um, and it's got uh, the cockpit in the back of the boat is just like, I don't know, maybe uh, yeah, six that, inches above the water line. That sounds, yes, 
so smooth. You, so you get a transom door and you can just step on the swim step and you don't have to climb a Jeffrey, ladder to get in. Jeffrey, when Jeffrey gets older, that will be great for him. Yeah, I think with dogs and as, as you age, getting on and off a boat with a lower transom is an important thing. And the diesel duck's the opposite. Like, it was standing on the dock, the aft deck, I want to say it was like uh, almost to my shoulder height and boarding from a dinghy or climbing a ladder. And I guess you could, yeah. you could make like your own little mini gangway of set of steps on the side of the boat. I've seen that on some higher freeboard boats. Um, so there's certainly workarounds, but uh, yeah, I like the idea of the, the low cockpit. And then the other one, it's more money, is the Nordhavens. Oh yeah, Nordhavens. Those are, uh, their corporate headquarters is right down the street in Dana Point. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you know, I think that's, uh, that's probably the wisest financial decision because of uh, they, they, sell. They, hold, they sell quickly, they hold and their value. And we're probably going to get 48 well, foot? What or is I shouldn't it? say they hold their value, they depreciate predictably. What's the uh, size you want to get? I, I like, well, again, this is all budget driven and I don't have the money right now. This is like if I can save enough over mm-hmm. the next several years. But uh, I like the original one. The 46 was the first I, one. Yeah, I, I prefer shorter. Yeah, I want to stay under 50 feet for sure. Yeah, that's So I like the original big. 46 footer. and the, So 46, 43, or 40. I think the 40 is just a little too small. The pilot house is just a bench seat with a table. There isn't really room for a, yeah. a home chair. I definitely want a home chair. I learned that in, on the boat we have now. So the mm-hmm. 43. Best comfortable, most comfortable chair in the entire boat. Yeah, so I think 43 because I can have proper home chair. And then the starboard side has got a walk around deck. The 40, the aft cabin, extends mm-hmm. all the way to the edges of the boat. So to get, like when you're docking or departing, to yeah. get from the stern cleats to the forward cleats. You need you to go to, all the way around. You got to go through the inside of the boat. Yeah, so I think having a side deck's a big deal. And the Krogans, they make them both ways. Some are what they call wide body. So the port side, uh, the house extends all the way to the edge, just like a Nordhaven. So you can only walk forward to aft on I'd the prefer side. It both sides. But... Yeah, I like both sides too. The trade-off is you have a smaller um, salon area. That's but... fine. As long as there's enough room to actually, like live in it it's good I, I i agree with you i'd rather have a uh, more functioning deck space you know for handling the boat than uh bigger accommodations for my couch and recliner yeah um the other thing with the diesel ducks is it's it's like living on a sailboat certainly you get the enclosed pilot house and it carries uh the most fuel out of everything we're looking at so it's got the longest range but all of the accommodations are below deck so you're looking through little port lights and you're at or below the water line when you're at your at the table having breakfast and I kind of prefer that style. Do you? Yeah. How come? I just like being below the water line it. I just like the look of it. I do like sleeping down there. I like the motion of the boat when your mm-hmm. body is close to the water line. Or below. Or Yeah. I don't know if I've ever actually slept below, maybe on a sailboat. No, I think even on the sailboats I've been on, you're like right at, maybe slightly above the water line. Yeah, time bandit is right on the water line. Yeah. Yeah. So I do like that aft salon setup of the kind of traditional... Mm-hmm. Trawler yacht like the Celine, Krogan, Nordhaven, but the Diesel Duck is a much more adventurous, offshore, safe. So, um, what are we gonna do with the channel for when we move? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I I've really enjoyed making these videos with you and yeah. your mom. Um, I think we can keep going. It's just the topics are gonna shift a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'd be good, but we're going to have a whole other region of the country to do boat stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to miss Catalina Island in Southern California. Yeah, me too. It, it's a great place. Like, only place, like, nearby where there is still, like, no houses, really. Oh, it's, Catalina Island? Yeah. Yeah. How's that been for you, that experience of living in this... Uh, urban suburban area and then we go out to the island and it's uh it's It's, like you're transformed to another country right it yeah it seems like another world like there's it's 
there's always noise here, but like in Catalina, if you get like um, from Cat, if you walk from just out of the two harbors, the town, if you go like halfway down that trail to Cat Harbor, you're it's like perfectly quiet, like there's no noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot less rules out there too, huh? Yeah. You're pretty much free to do your mm -hmm. own thing as long as it's responsible. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the kids, your peer group, they can't leave their driveways without their parents supervising them. Yeah. And what's it like with the kids out of Catalina? Um, you don't even meet their parents until like playing with, with them for like a couple hours, like until it's like time for them to have lunch. So, uh, are you stuck on the boat the whole time or what? Um, no, we're, I can, as long as I finish what I need to do in the morning, which I, is like the hardest part of the entire day, um, I can do whatever I want after. So yeah, you're uh, you're until basically lunch. yeah you're basically gone until you get hungry, right? Mm. Or it gets dark. Until practic I'm gone until you make me come back. Or I just get absolutely exhausted and I have nothing to do and I'm soaked. So I had the privilege when I was a kid of being on a boat yeah. pretty much every weekend. And as you know, a lot of my family in Maine mm -hmm. and New England have nautical careers, right? Yeah, like your um, cousin is a lobster fisherman. I know somebody in your family runs a ferry, ferry service, mm -hmm. and yeah. So having that experience as a kid was what, it had such an effect on me as an adult, mm -hmm. and that's why I wanted to make sure mm -hmm. you had the opportunity. Yeah. To see the ocean and get that programmed in your head while you're young. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. Kind of ready to move on to another boat. I. Run Time Bandit. I, like Catalina. It's, just like, the crossing. It can be pretty rough, and that's kind of, can be the worst part. But that, in a way, doesn't that make it even better when you get there and the sun's out and the water's flat and it's warm? Yeah. It's just I, I'm ready to go to another boat that like doesn't rock as much. That's brought, that's my main thing that I like. Fair I'm much. fine with the speed as long as I don't get very seasick on it, which I tend to on the way over. Yeah, I we've like visited people on sailboats. It is, yeah, it, it feels like perfectly smooth, like we're on land. It, well, like other people like. But my friend that I met on in Two Harbors when I still had the big board, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she doesn't like sailboats and uh, just she is on a sailboat and she thinks that's rough. It's like perfectly flat. It it's entirely different. So we you had a sailboat. You learned how to sail on our time the, out there at the island. What did you have? The laser and also or not we didn't bring the laser out, we actually um, got rid of the laser, but we're, we're able to use it whenever we want, right? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't taken advantage of that. So we had a laser sailboat. I, mm -hmm. um, I bought it after drinking the better part of a six-pack of beer with one of our boat neighbors, and he, um, basically for the price of beer, we picked up a, a laser. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of fun on that thing, and then um, when the marina remodeled, they got rid of the over 10-foot length dinghy racks, so there wasn't a place to store it. Um, but no, I was, I was referring to the, the little dinghy, sailing dinghy. We yeah, got. um, I think it's back, um, behind our, like, shed over that, there, but, um, I Actually, think. It's been gone for, like, six months. Oh. <laughs> I loaned it out to, uh. Why, I am, um, I, our sailing I haven't been on it in, like, a year. It's like a little dinghy with, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I, uh, wanted to get it out of the yard, because <laughs> we weren't sailing. <laughs> Yeah, I entirely forgot about it. <laughs> it's all right. We still have part, parts from it. Jeffrey's drinking rain puddles. Yeah. On to the next adventure. There'll be more boats. We're going to keep publishing. Hopefully. Thank you all. It's been an amazing community. I want to keep going, but I'm grateful to uh, 
Yeah. All the new friends we've made online, uh, chat with a lot of you over email and text messages, and uh, we'll keep doing that. I'm happy to, uh, if anyone's got any questions trawler related, uh, happy to try to answer them, as just from my own experience. Certainly no professional perspective. All right, more to come. Thank you for watching. You gotta hold the rod, buddy. I see him. He looks maybe a little bigger. Oh, he's bigger. Oh, he sees the boat now. Keep it tight. You gotta swing the rod to me so I can pull him. He's about the same, maybe a touch bigger.